Hello, Tom Ricketts here, speaking to you from home plate at Wrigley Field. We've been celebrating Wrigley's 100th birthday this season, and it's just reminded me how much Wrigley Field means to so many fans. My family feels the same way. It's an incredible responsibility to be the stewards of this treasured baseball icon. My family and I have been working tirelessly with the front office team to build a World Series champion and to invest in and preserve Wrigley Field so that we can celebrate that ultimate victory right here. I'm here in the clubhouse now. While fans love their seats at Wrigley, we are providing our players with subpar facilities. For example, unlike 29 other ball clubs that have batting cages where hitters can warm up to live pitching or with a pitching machine before they enter a game, here at Wrigley we have a batting tee and a net that we pull down from the ceiling. So when we have a pinch hitter, who needs to warm up, especially important for those chilly spring games at Wrigley, he comes back to the clubhouse. We pull down a board to protect the television. We lower a net in front of the television and places the ball on the tee, a tee just like the ones kids use in Little League to get his warm-up swings. This is just one example of why our Wrigley Field expansion plan is so important. Now, I'm not saying Wrigley is the reason the Chicago Cubs haven't won a world championship in more than 100 years. But I am saying it is time to invest in Wrigley Field and to do the things that our competitors do. Investing in Wrigley will provide better resources for our players so that we have every advantage instead of falling further behind the rest of the major leagues. Expanding and preserving Wrigley is critical to the Chicago and Illinois economies. Did you know that we are the third most visited tourist attraction in the state of Illinois? We drive nearly $650 million in economic development every year and support thousands and thousands of jobs. Wrigley is a 100-year-old ballpark, and the lack of investment over the years has hurt our players' ability to train and prepare. At Wrigley, our major league team is in the worst player facilities in baseball. Meanwhile, in Mesa, Arizona, and the Dominican Republic, we have the best facilities in the game. Unfortunately, it seems like my family's plans for Wrigley Field have gotten lost in a dispute with the rooftops. As a result, despite having new city ordinances to allow for expansion and renovation of Wrigley Field, we are back to square one with the rooftop businesses. At the Cubs convention in January of 2013, I told fans the Ricketts family would privately finance $500 million to expand Wrigley Field and invest in the Wrigleyville neighborhood. We don't want city or state economic development incentives that are routinely provided to other investment projects of this scale. We just want to exercise our right to improve Wrigley Field. We wanted the city's approval to both expand and preserve Wrigley. We wanted to be able to improve the stadium, including putting up signs in our own ballpark, just like the Red Sox do at Fenway another great baseball cathedral. Being unable to improve our park puts us in the hole by tens of millions of dollars every year. Our competitors in the Central Division don't suffer that restriction. They can put up signs in the outfield and create other revenue to invest in their baseball teams. Finally, last summer, the city approved our Wrigley Field plan, including the bleacher and wall expansion and our master sign plan. During the political process to accommodate the rooftop owners, we tapered the plan to move forward with a sign in right field and a video board in left field. But in the months since, rooftop owners have made clear that despite the city's approval and our clear contractual rights, they plan to file lawsuits to try to stop our renovation and expansion plans. They've already filed one lawsuit against one of their critics who had the courage to criticize their approach. We've spent endless hours negotiating with the rooftop businesses We've gotten nowhere in our talks with them to settle this dispute. It has to end. It's time to move forward. I have to put the team and the fans first. So today, we are going forward with our original plan. We are proposing a master plan to the city of Chicago to expand Wrigley Field and to have several signs in the ballpark. We need to press ahead with the expansion and the many planned improvements. We cannot delay any longer. The time to build a winner is now. Our plan will provide more revenue for Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer to invest in building a championship ball club. 
Our plan will provide more revenue for our business operation to lead an expansion and preservation of the greatest ballpark in baseball, Wrigley Field. I know this plan is in the best interest of our fans and our players. We hoped to avoid heading to the courthouse, but the most important thing is we want to exercise our right to expand and preserve the ballpark we own and love. I wanted you to hear from me first about our plans to move forward. We will need your help. Tens of thousands of you have lent your support to us by signing up at WrigleyField.com. If you haven't signed on to our campaign yet, please visit our website so that we can keep you updated. To save Wrigley Field for the next generation of fans and give our players the advantages they need to compete, we must move forward with our master plan. It's the right thing to do. It's time to move forward. Thanks for your support and go Cubs.